Senator Elizabeth Warren coming on strong for a 2020 challenge. She's urging Democrats to reject the center and move far left. Democracy at Work founder and the New School visiting professor Richard Wolff is with us now. She doesn't go, uh, you're the Marxist, right? I am. Happy to be so. In 20, I can't believe it. He's yes, actually well, a Marxist. You know, life is changing. It always does. Okay, comrade. Uh, does Elizabeth Warren, the good senator, has she gone far enough left for you? Surely not. No, she hasn't. But I can see that what she's doing is continuing, in a sense, what Bernie Sanders was trying to do, which is to open up the question of what direction that party should be. And I think it's a reflection of what's happening in the United States as the country splits more and more between rich and poor and those who benefit from government programs and those who don't and so on. There are going to be questions about the political life we lead and the old style is going to vanish and new parties and new splits will emerge and she's well, just part of that. Now, look, that's interesting political commentary bearing in mind the state of America today. Right. Now Bernie Sanders, he wants to go a little bit further left I think. He's got this single payer idea Right. Medicare for all. Right. Um, now we've got an in, a report from the Urban Institute that says that that Medicare for all over a 10 year period would cost 32 trillion dollars. That's a little daunting, isn't it? It's daunting. It's one of many uh, estimates, some of which are much lower than that. So you True. have to kind of. But whatever work that it takes, you would take it off the rich. No, I would take it off a change in the economic system. I don't think whacking one group of the population to help another is a way to build a community or to build a nation. I would never do that. Well, would, I would, how would you come up with trillions of dollars? Like, let's call it $32 trillion. How by changing the economic system, how do you come up with that money? Well, the, for, give you an example. Uh, we have a society now in which, according to Oxfam in England, something like the richest 25, 30 people own as much wealth as the bottom half of the population of the planet. Okay. If so, you could begin to deal with a change in the economic system, you would distribute our wealth in a different way. Ah, now and that's, I'm not, that's, I'm not that's in favor passive. of taking now, it from the rich for the poor. I'm in favor of not distributing it unequally in the first place. So <laughs> somebody has to give up their wealth and you're the one who's going to take it. No. Yes. You're going to change the system so the wealth is not distributed in that way in the first place. Oh, well, it's already been distributed in that way. What do you have, a revolution? No, that's what you do. You change the way the economy works so it doesn't distribute it to a few people Wait enormously. Wait a second. Because that's why we have these struggles. We take from the rich to Jeff give to the poor, and then they're surprised that the society is ripped Jeff apart Bezos. by conflict. Jeff Bezos has a, a personal wealth right now of roughly $90 billion. Yes. That's wealth. How do you take it off him? How do you redistribute that wealth, which is now his? Right. You can notice if you talk to Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett or Bill Gates or any of those other folks, they're in the process of giving that wealth away to charities, to whatever it is that occurs to them to do. They're famous for doing that. I have a better suggestion. Change the economic system so that we don't have one person they've in a position to do that. But they've got it right now. They've got it. Oh, you, you've got it. But we live in a democracy. To you've if got the majority of, of people were to understand how a different economic system would distribute things in a different way, we would have the mechanism to you, go in that you direction. You've still got to take it off them. No, you've got to change the system. Leave him with it. Change, change the, the system. system. You take it off somebody. You take no. it off me. You take it off Liz. You take it off Ashley. If you've you accumulated know, irony, wealth, you take it off. The irony is, here I am, a socialist, yes. telling to you, I'm not in favor of taking it from one group and giving it to another. But, uh, wait, I you want a different understood. system, so we're not in that box. You've not explained to me how, when we've got the, this, this different system, Magically, the wealth owned by the Bezos people of this world suddenly goes away from them and goes to other people. You've not explained how this happens. Let me suggest this how we can do it. change in the economic no, system doesn't that, work. It's very, very concrete. Let me explain. Suppose you had, which we already have around the world, something called a worker co-op, a situation in which a business is owned and operated by all the people in a democratic way. So they sit around and decide, like we do with political decisions, how we produce, what we produce, what technology we use, and how we distribute the fruits of what everybody helps to produce. They would never give billions to one person while everybody else can't send their kids to school. Yeah, because a you, cooperative production system. You have expropriated the wealth. 
Because when we get to that system where the workers sit around and decide who gets what, you've literally changed the system and taken it away from the people who've got it now. You Absolutely. have appropriated you've changed it the by system. force. You have done it by force. Not necessary. I'm not going to give you my wealth. No. You're going to take it off me. But you agree that we live in a democratic system uh, and if uh, the majority uh, no, of the people no, want no. to change it, got then you. you would go along with it, otherwise no. you're no. not no. supporting the democracy. You are taking it off me. As somebody with a gun, a police officer, will come to my house and take off that wealth. It's expropriation. That's what you're talking about. I'm talking about letting the people in this country and any other country decide whether they would rather have an economic system that functions democratically at the workplace or keep the one we have, which produces this inequality that puts us at each other's throats. Okay, we'll agree to differ. How about this one? Sir Richard Branson, multi-billionaire, he wants a universal income for all. His rationale is that robots are taking over. Somebody's got to provide an income for the people who lose their jobs. In favor of that? In principle, are you in favor of a universal income? No. Really? No. Why not? I told you, socialism, Marxism, these things are changing and rethinking just like everybody else. Here's what I don't like about the universal basic income. I like the idea that we can take care of everybody and we ought to as a nation. What I don't like is to divide society into those who work and earn their income and those who don't work mm. and still get an income. I don't see that as healthy, I don't see that as fair, and I see that as a prescription for trouble down the road. Here's my suggestion. When we have technological change like robots, computers, let the work day be shortened. Make everybody work to do their fair share and so participate in the benefits of technology with a shorter work week for everybody so nobody gets an income without working and no one works without getting an income. That would be a better way to take care of people than what we do now, which is use technology to make a lot of profits for people, throw a lot of people out of work, and then be surprised when they're at each other. These do two. you realize that you now have the largest audience of capitalists that you will ever have in your life. Do you realize that? No, I hope I will have more of them. <laughs> I hope we get more of them, too. Good. Let's work together on it. <laughs>